Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where we will show you how to design steel connections in RAM connection for an analyzed RAM structural system model. So let's begin. RAM connection can design connections for a variety of joints. During the connection design process, we will assign connections to the different joints using the RAM connections database of predefined connection templates which are separated into different connection families. As we start designing connections, we will select joints within the same connection family with similar forces so they can be designed together. For this video, we will be designing the beam column flange connections for the gravity beams that were designed in RAM steel beam. In RAM structural system, all gravity steel beams support gravity loads only, such as dead load and live load, and they are assumed to be simply supported, which means they will require a connection capable of resisting shear forces. If we were to review the RAM connection database, we would see that there are several shear connectors that are available for beam to column flange joints for a variety of joint data and configurations. Please note that not all connectors may be available for each design code and that the RAM connection help manual details which connectors are available for each design specification. We will now turn our attention to the analyzed RAM structural system model in RAM connection where we will design the gravity beam column flange connections according to the AISC 360 specification which has already been selected. Designing connections in RAM connection is a two-step process. You're going to start by selecting the joints you want to design together, and that would be typically joints of the same family and with similar forces and joint data. And then you would select a connection database compatible with the currently selected joints. Now I find it easiest to work on one level at a time, so I'm going to go ahead and isolate the first floor level using the view and selection tools. The view tools can be found by right clicking in your main window and the selection tools can be found in the home tab of the ribbon toolbar. Here I'm going to draw a fence around the first floor level, go up to the home tab in the ribbon toolbar and click on the hide unselected elements. Now joints can be selected by selecting the members and nodes for a specific joint or they can also be selected by using the select joints command, which I find easiest. Let's go ahead and access that command. We're gonna to go to the home tab of the ribbon toolbar, go to the elements selection tool, and then we can select joints. And you can see all of our different joint types are separated by different families. Let's go ahead and select all of our beam column flange joints. Now for this particular model, our beam column flange joints fall into two main categories. The majority of the building structure uses wide flange column sections, while the single story columns at the first floor level uses hollow structural sections. So I have a couple of round tubes and a couple of rectangular hollow sections. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and manually unselect the beams that are connecting to a hollow structural section, and I'm going to design specific connections for those joints in a subsequent step. So to unselect any beam in my model, we're going to go ahead and hold down the shift key and let's go ahead and select or unselect the beams that are being supported by the hollow structural sections. Now the rest of the beams within this model have very similar joint data and very similar load data. So I'm going to go ahead and design them all together. To start the design process, let's go up to the Design tab in the Ribbon Toolbar and we'll go ahead and click on the Assign icon. Before we review and choose the connection templates we want to use for the currently selected joins, we're going to tell the program whether or not we want to design a basic connection or a smart connection and whether or not we want to design our connections in groups or individually. 
For this particular example, we'll use the basic connection database and design our connections individually. We are now ready to select a connection database to use for the currently selected joints. Considering the joint data and the shear forces that we must resist, we have several different options available to us. For this particular exercise, we're going to go ahead and select a clip angle connection that'll be all bolted. That means it'll be bolted to the support and also bolted to the beam member. Once you select the connection type that you're interested in, go ahead and click on the assign button. After your connection design is complete, there's a few key areas I like to review before moving on to the next step in my workflow. The first area is the messages at the bottom right hand corner of your screen. Here we're going to notice whether any errors or warnings were encountered during our connection design process. Looking in the messages window, I'm noticing that I did receive some errors during the previous connection assignment, and they're all related to the same type of error. Basically, I selected a connection that was not compatible with the joint. Looks like I accidentally selected some joints that had hollow structural sections as a column section, and a double angle bolted connection wouldn't be compatible. Now, within this error, we're going to notice that the program has provided me with the node number and the beam number and the column number to give me some additional information. If I want to review the node numbers and beam numbers for the currently selected elements, I can go up to the View tab of the Ribbon Toolbar, use the Properties information, and say I want to display node numbers and member numbers. Now taking a look here, I could see that there is an issue right here and an issue right here. I'm guessing these are hollow structural section columns. Now to verify that, I can go ahead and select these columns, go to the data area, and take a look at the nodes and descriptions area. Yes, these are hollow structural sections, so I'm going to go ahead and include those in the next exercise. Let's go ahead and move on. And what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to go ahead and select all of the gravity beam column flange joints at this level that are connecting to hollow structural section columns. To do that, let's go to the Home tab of the Ribbon Toolbar. I'm going to go to the Elements Selection option again, go to Joints and Special Selection. Here I'm going to select all the beam column flange joints again that are pinned at each end. We'll click OK. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to manually unselect any member that's not connecting to a hollow structural section. In addition, I could also unselect the nodes at these corner columns since these are wide flange columns and they already have a connection assigned to them. At this point, we're ready to go ahead and perform our connection assignment for the currently selected joints. To start that process, let's go to the Design tab of the Ribbon Toolbar and select the Assign icon. Again, we're going to go with a basic connection workflow and we're going to design our connections individually. At this point, I'm going to select a connection type that would be compatible with a support section of a hollow structural section. Specifically, I need to make sure that that connection will be welded to the column and not bolted. For this example, I'm going to go ahead and select the single plate option. Once I make my selection, I can click on the Assign button, and again, I'm going to review the Messages window to see if I have any errors and warnings. No errors or warnings were produced, so it looks like a connection was assigned to each of the currently selected joints. Now that we've completed our process for assigning connections to all of the gravity beam column flange joints at the first floor level, let's go ahead and review our overall status. I'm going to start by selecting everything at this level. Now if I want to turn off the view of the node numbers and the member numbers, I can go ahead and use the tools within the View tab of the Ribbon Toolbar. Let's take a look in the data area. Here I'm going to notice all the connection templates that were chosen during the previous two steps, or basically all the connection templates that are currently selected. 
Now the majority of the joints where we have a typical wide flange column has utilized the double angle beam column flange connection. Our connector piece is an L three by three by one quarter with two three quarter inch diameter bolts. If we go ahead and scroll on down, we could see that also we have assigned some single plate connections. These were utilized for all of our hollow structural section columns. Here I can see that this is a BCF type of single plate. We are using a quarter inch plate with two three quarter inch diameter bolts. Now after reviewing which connection templates were utilized, we can also review the overall status of the model. To do that, Let's go to the View tab of the Ribbon Toolbar, and I'm going to select this Status icon. This will color code all of the currently selected connections according to their design status. Now you can select each type of connection design status in a single click. So here we can see that all of our connections are passing. If I were to select the No Good or the Error on Design, I'm going to notice that there are no currently selected connections and the same goes for warnings. So I'm feeling pretty comfortable at this point that all of those joints were designed and they all passed their code check requirements. Now before I move on to design any further connections, what I like to do is I like to interrogate my model to make sure that connections have been assigned to all the joints I had intended. And so far, I've intended to design connections to all of my gravity beam column flange joints at this level. So let's go ahead and select those joints and their connections. To do that, we are going to go to the Home tab, the Ribbon Toolbar. I'm going to go ahead and say select all of my beam column flange joints that are pinned. And I'm going to go ahead and say connections. Let's go ahead and select all of our connections thus far. Now let's make sure that each of those joints have a connection assigned to them. To do that, let's go to the output tab in the ribbon toolbar and we'll select the data icon. Through the data icon, we'll now select our joints list and we'll sort the joints by family type. Let's go ahead and click OK. Now the way reports work in RAM connection is whatever you have selected at that moment will be included in the report. I have all the joints that I'm interested in and all of their connections. So if I were to take a look at this report, I would see that all the beam column flange joints at this level are selected and reported. And the program's able to tell me which types of forces I need to resist and whether or not I've resisted those forces successfully. So here I can see that for shear, a connection was assigned to all of the currently selected joints. If no connection was assigned, it would say not assigned as of yet. It would also be in red writing. Now I don't have any moment frames selected right now and so moment connections wouldn't be applicable. So let's go ahead and close out of this report. So I'm feeling pretty good about the first floor level of this structure. I know that a Shear connection was assigned to all of my gravity beam column flange joints. I know that all of them have passed their code check requirements. Now I may want to go ahead and further get some information on each of those joints. So let's go ahead and select one of the connections in our model and we'll review that connection in the connection pad. So let's go ahead and select any connection you like. I'm gonna select this one and we're gonna see that connection available in the data area. To edit any connection manually, you're gonna to go to the design tab of the ribbon toolbar and then edit your connection. This will bring up the connection pad for the currently selected joint. Now within the connection pad, you're gonna see all of the connection parameters or information available in the left-hand pane. Now some of this information was populated from your analysis model and from your RAM connection criteria. All of those types of parameters should be modified at another area and to indicate them we have a little blue arrow adjacent to them. This means that this type of parameter should not be edited in the connection pad and won't be saved to the connection once 
if changes are made. In addition to that, however, we can go down and see that there's a variety of connection pieces of information that we can customize. This might include some coping information. This might include some angle sizes, angle materials. Here you can see that we can see the bolted connection was used. We can switch to a welded connection. We can modify our bolt size or bolt material. We can modify our hole type and our bolt spacing. Now each type of connection within the RAM connection database has a different set of parameters that can be customized for your use. And in addition to that, you are able to create your own custom databases of these types of connections so that they could be used as your default. Now in addition to reviewing and being able to modify all of these parameters, we can also review the DXF drawing of each joint. So here I could see all of the connection parameters available in the DXF view. The last thing we're gonna do is take a look at our results. This will bring up our steel connection report. Now we're gonna notice that each check is available as a quick link and we can go and jump directly to that location within the report. We can also review all of the mathematical formulas that were used in the connection calculations. So if I click on this view formulas button, I'll be able to see all the formulas, all the checks, all the variables that were used during this connection design process. I can also see the status of each of their checks and the section for the code for which we're referring to. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and close out of that report. I didn't make any changes in the connection pad, so I can just go ahead and close it and then move on my workflow. Now at this point, what I would do is I would go ahead and turn my entire model back on and then I'd work my way up my building for the remainder of my beam column flange joints that require shear connections because they are gravity beams. At this point, this concludes our workflow for how to design a connection in RAM connection for an analyzed RAM structural system model with a special focus on our beam column flange joints that are supporting pinned end beams. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.